Welcome to Career Journeys, a series of videos by the Consortium for Public Education. Here we explore the career experiences and pathways of professionals from a wide variety of careers to help you think about the skills you'll need and the paths you might take after high school. Welcome to Career Journeys. I am Sarah Brooks with the Consortium for Public Education. Today, I am here talking with Neil Brown, Research Scientist and Project Manager at Urban Kind Institute. Thank you so much for being with us here today. It's a pleasure to be here. Can you tell me a bit more about what Urban Kind Institute does and what your role is there? I'll give you the, 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 the one minute overview of what Urban Kind is. Um, so pretty much it's considered kind of this think and do tank, right? So to really bring folks together to think really creatively, to reimagine what society could look like um, and to actually activate that, to actually do things that are important for um, advancing policies and practices, running programs around urban communities, and in particular, their relationship to, to the environment, right? So urban kind is built off the idea of urban spaces and being kind to people, right? So that is kind of the gist. So it involves doing a lot of different things. In particular, uh, my role is I manage a couple of the projects that, that um, Urban Kind um, kind of convenes, one being the Equitable and Just platform for Pittsburgh. And I also do research. So being able to kind of collect data and think about how we, we actually take that data and turn it into actionable steps and how we document what is happening. What was your career path that led you to Urban Kind Institute and to your current position? I actually started out wanting to be a vet. All my degrees are actually in animal science. So I am an animal nutritionist. So my bachelor's degree, master's degree, and my doctorate are focused on how to feed livestock in a way that reduces environmental impacts, but at the same time allows for food. In particular, for my doctorate, I looked at milk production wow. and how we can produce milk efficiently um, for, for human consumption, right? And so while I was doing this work, um, I also, I got really interested in just sustainability and thinking about policy, like environmental policies, thinking about the people who are being impacted by this, or the farmers, and so kind of the, the legacy, you know, of some of our dairy farmers and the history, and some of the things that folks held on to really tight, you know, even when, as the world was changing, some folks were somewhat hesitant while other folks were open and willing to kind of take, to grab the, the new changes by the horn. And, you know, that then led me to thinking about, well, wait a minute, I want to, I want to be a little bit more involved on the people side, right? So I was involved in kind of the, the more technical STEM based side. I want to get more into social sciences, asking questions about people. And um, I took a position where I was doing recruiting work from historically black colleges to uh, an earth system science program at Penn State. I, I did that for a really short time. And then that led to me actually designing educational programs around sustainability where I would take students to South Africa and Jamaica. And so I'd be in South Africa traveling across South Africa for you know almost three months with students. And that was the classroom. And so engaging with different communities, and now I found myself in this space where I was comfortable with the environmental sciences. I was very comfortable with talking to people. Actually, I like talking to people. And then realizing that there was also this other aspect, especially with my work um, internationally, where there were some people who were just removed from decision-making processes, right? There were folks who were not able or not um, didn't have the privilege of kind of asking some of the really tough questions about their environment. You know, why is it that there's a landfill here and we have parks over here, right? Why is it that we have all these trees here, but just asphalt and, you know, um, over in, in this space? So just, just really being able to have the privilege to stop and think and did some volunteer work with Urban Kind and then that evolved into where I am now doing this kind of work. What are some skills that make you particularly good at your job? To answer that question, I'll, I'll, I'll put it like this. I really enjoy and I like 
complicating the simple and simplifying the complex. And, and what I mean by that is it's being able to look at something that seems almost just ignore it, you know, nothing, nothing important here, nothing to see here, keep on moving kind of a thing, right? And being able to recognize the value of that. How did this thing come to be? Why is it here? Um, and that is kind of complicating the simple, right? Being able to use the senses to observe, you know, I might hear someone say something in a conversation and that's an opportunity to say, wait a minute, um, they just kind of said that and moved on, but I think there's something else there. Let me, let me try to go do some more background work. Um, or if it's appropriate, I can, you know, stop and ask um, what's happening there. But just being able to pick up on some of those everyday things that are easy to ignore, that are very simple, that don't seem to be very significant. Um, and then being able to kind of dig a little bit deeper. And, and simplifying the complex um, is just being able to take some of these really broad challenges, like you know, climate change, thinking about, um, thinking about the, the, the political system and how um, people engage, thinking about just the, 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 the diverse ways in which we all kind of think and trying to be um, accommodating and inclusive, but at the same time recognizing that the certain decisions have to be made in order for our society to kind of move forward and in order for all of us to, to be um, to able to live, right? To be able to live in a way that's at least, at least comfortable, bare minimum. Can we be comfortable and can we um, be able to kind of remove some of the harm? It's, it's something that I, I spend a lot of time kind of going through. Some folks would say that I might be intense sometimes because um, I'm always kind of trying to think about these things and trying to piece things together. You know, it, thinking about new ways of getting, of engaging folks to share, um, you know, that, that's, that's something that I, I, I do kind of spend some time on, right? That listening part, spend some time on, but also pay attention to what's not being said, right? I, I think that's the other piece that I've had to really focus on, being able to do the, the, the background work to say, but you didn't mention that why. And again, if it's appropriate, be able to, to ask, you know, why didn't you mention this particular thing? Um, I would expect that you you would, you know, based on, on our relationship and so on. And um, yeah, so that, that's another piece I'll bring into it, the listening for what's there and paying attention to what's not there. Uh, you have a particular interest in the intersection between research, urban communities, and social justice. Uh, mm -hmm. What can you tell us about all of that, all how Ooh. it works together, <laughs> and how it informs your work? When I'm thinking about social justice, I'm just thinking about um, everyone having an equal opportunity to, to, to thrive, right? Not just, not just to, to um, in taking one of, the, one of my colleagues' words, not just to survive, right? Um, not in, in spite of all these hurdles or people who are kind of coming out every day, but if society would be, be kind of collectively helped to remove some of those boundaries that folks could actually get some success based on the efforts that they're putting in. And it's not just because of um, particular um, characteristics, not just because of um, skin color, or not just because of gender, or not just because you don't fit in a particular category that you're being kind of, more hurdles are being placed in front of you. And, this, and, and so that, that's kind of where we're coming from with this idea of social justice. And so the intersection in urban spaces in particular, um, where urban spaces kind of have a lot of things kind of smashing up together, right? You get, you get all of these things in, in really a small space. It's a lot of, it's, it's really dense. And so um, being able to figure out what questions to ask, whose voices are not being heard, Right? Who are the folks who actually are trying to contribute to this, this larger society embracing social justice? And who are the folks who aren't there yet? The folks who are still somewhat holding on to, let's say, a traditional way of doing things that doesn't allow for others to partake in decision making and so on. And so the, the, it informs my work with how I ask questions, whose, whose questions I prioritize, um, 
the people who I give credibility to, right? So if I'm, I might talk to, if I'm engaging with five or six different people, um, am I going to prioritize those who have a formal degree versus those who have lived in a particular community or under particular conditions? Um, and so that, that is how it kind of informs the way that um, we, we do our work. And it, it's, not, it's not perfect, right? You keep, you continue to refine um, that process of, of, of the work. You continue to refine it and continue to learn from it. And, um, but that's, that's how the, that intersection of being in a space where all of these different environmental factors and social factors and histories and stories are, are pushed into a small space. And then the social justice piece kind of sits around all of that, where well, who, whose voice gets, gets heard while whose voice doesn't. And then the research piece is to figure out what are the questions that need to be asked to try to unpack that, to move us forward and to be more thoughtful and intentional in decision-making. What's one piece of advice you would give to anyone aspiring to be in your field or in your position? I would say pay attention to the trends in the world, right? Um, I think it's, it's really easy to go through and just not pay attention to anything that you aren't already interested in, but to intentionally push yourself to, even if something is boring, Right. Try to ask yourself, well, how does this, why do others think this is important? You know, just trying to get into the habit of paying attention to things that you might not initially think to be valuable. Um, and I think that's, that's what I would say, that if you start to get into that space, you, you, you read a book that you might not necessarily pay attention to watch a, a, a TV program that might not necessarily be um, based on the title, you might say, nope, not my thing. You know, try to watch something on, go through Netflix and choose a genre that you don't usually watch. You know, try to talk to someone that, um, about a topic, even if you don't want to talk to someone new, but you know, there are people that you talk to and you talk about the same things you know, try to talk to someone that you, you always talk to about a particular thing, try to talk about something else, you know, see how they think about things in particular. So I would say um, the advice would be to start to, to just do some of those things. Um, and I think that would be good practice. And it's always just constant negotiation, right? You're trying to find your passion but you're also trying to make sure that you're fitting within opportunities that, that function. You, you, they can't function independently, right? And um, in doing that, your passions will change. You're constantly learning and getting exposed to new things. And the more you get exposed, the more you can reset and think about, ooh, I, I like this even more. Or, you know, I don't like doing this anymore after I've done it for, you know, X number of years or whatever the case is. So just being able to grow and learn and adapt. Overall, I think it's just being able to push yourself into some of these um, uncomfortable spaces. If I was to summarize it, I would say um, that's a piece of advice that I'd give. Thank you very much for joining us today, Neil. This has been a pleasure. <laughs> a pleasure for me as well. For more information or to learn about other careers in the Career Journey series, visit our website and check back soon for our next installment. Thanks!